Everybody snap your fingers Everybody stomp your feet Then everybody clap your hands Let's move to the rhythm of a crazy dream so some basics, the, the Brixton Pound as an initiative came out of Transition Town Brixton, which is uh, I think one of the stronger transition towns in London. Um, does everybody know what transition towns are? Or anybody not know? No? Okay, great. Um, uh, the Brixton Town itself was really kicked off by a guy called Josh Ryan Collins, who's an economist who works at the New, New Economics Foundation, who've also been very supportive mm -hmm. to the Brixton Pound. Uh, and he had his, uh, described as a, a radical economic think tank. It's a, a campaigning organisation that tries to effect change in um, our sort of financial model. Um, so the Brixton Pound launched in September 2009. Um, there's somewhere around 40,000 pounds of the Brixton Pound cash. Circulation. Um, if that figure seems low, um, bear in mind that it's constantly recirculating. Um, because it's cash, uh, we can't tell quite what the economic activity is, and that's one of the problems of the scheme that I'll come onto. So, for example, it might be that 40k circulates three times a week, giving a, an effective value to the community of many times that, or it might not, we just don't know. Um, when we originally launched the notes, we put an expiry date on them uh, of two years after launch. Um, and we did that because we weren't sure if the scheme was going to be successful or not. We thought it was good to have a defined period. Um, it also gave us the opportunity to then relaunch with a second set of notes, put some new figures on them, and create a bit more of a, a media buzz. So the second issue was launched September last year, and at the same time we launched our Pay by Text initiative, which is an electronic currency and a, a mobile payment scheme. Um, okay. uh, so the Bricks and Pounds goals are really to support local and I should say local and independent businesses. Um, and through doing so to, to strengthen the local economy. Um, we can talk a bit about the theory behind this, but the basic idea is that <laughs> if you have money being spent in locally owned businesses, that money is actually worth a great deal more to your community because that business themselves will then go on and hopefully respend that money locally as well. And that creates something that uh, Neff has described as the local multiplier effect. And it's basically, if you have money that stays within the community and keeps recirculating, it ends up being worth two or three times what the original input is. Uh, in contrast, if you walk into Tesco or another internet, national or global chain, uh, most of the money that you spend there um, will immediately leak out of the local economy and either end up in shareholders' pockets or in a long supply chain that could be thousands of miles away. So in fact, um, an effort calculated that for every pound that you spend in a, a non-locally owned business, probably only about 20 p a bit ends up staying in the community. So that's quite a, a big difference. Um, another goal of uh, starting Bricks and Pounds is really to get people thinking about money a bit more. I mean, we all take it for granted. Um, we just assume that it's a kind of neutral tool. Um, and of course it's not. Um, where you spend it, who you spend it with, how you spend it, all these things can have quite a profound effect on, on the community that you live in. And the great thing with having a, a note is that was a, a tool to start discussions. Um, we we're also very keen to encourage more local business to business trading and basically search out links that you can make between businesses because Although you might think that Brixton as a, an urban community doesn't really produce very much, it's surprising how many opportunities there are for local businesses to, to work with each other. Um, sometimes it's not obvious, but for example, um, you know, a cafe in the area, okay, they probably can't source their coffee beans or their fruit and veg truly locally, although they could deal with a local wholesaler. Um, 
but they can certainly source maybe design for a website or other local services. Um, maybe, in fact, in Brixton there is a company that is a local coffee roaster. Um, so there are, there are usually many more opportunities for trade and yeah. than you might think. And one of our goals is to try and broker those relationships between businesses and try and get them re spending with each other. Um, feeding off all of this, really, and, and coming out of the original transition term ethic was the desire to lower carbon emissions. So obviously the more local trading you have, the more people can source locally. Hopefully that means we're, we're cutting down the carbon footprint as well. Um, okay, uh, so the financial model of the Brixton plan, very simple. Um, it's back one to one with Sterling. So we have a, a reserve account every time somebody goes to exchange point and buys some, or exchanges some notes we then take that sterling and put it in the bank account. Um, <coughs> so there's always there's always a parallel cost to sterling to match the risk and pound. Um, it's technically a voucher. Of course, no one in this country um, is allowed to put money anymore, as James explained. Um, so you can see it as a voucher that uh, businesses don't have to accept. Um, it's up to them. Um, Bricks and Pound is an organisation, so when it launched, it was entirely volunteer staff. In fact, now we do have some, some paid jobs. Um, the original model is purely volunteer based. Um, and we use a mixture of business and council sponsorship um, to front some of our costs, such as printing rates and so um, So, this is the original model. Um, but, um, Let's just have a quick look at uh, what was good and what was bad about that model, um, and then that leads on to why we decided to innovate and launch a new currency. Um, so on the positive side, we generated vast amounts of media attention, much more than we could cope with actually. And almost not a week goes by where we can just turn down uh, some a, a journalist from overseas or a student doing research. People seem inherently interested in, you know, why the hell you do something as crazy as your child parents did. Um, Lambda Council actually estimated that all the positive PR that we created for books of this, if they had to pay a big R or take out advertising, it would cost them well in excess of 100 k um, So you can see why maybe they've been quite supportive. Um, we truly started the dialogue, I think, between businesses and Brixton members. Whether or not people think the scheme is good or bad, whether they support it or they don't support it, those conversations have happened, um, and that's great. Uh, the other positive, I think, is that um, we've been very lucky with both the first and the second issue you know, to have quite striking visual designs. And as, as these notes circulate, they're a very visual, striking reminder that, that we're there and that somehow exists. Um, I should say, actually, I've got some examples of three of the current notes, which I'll happily pass around. Um, so I have a one and a five and a ten. I don't actually have the uh, 20 with me, but if you'd like to pass them around and have a look. Um, they are actually worth money, so they do need to be But I do have more with me, so if anybody wants to actually buy some books at uh, then you can. And of course, you can keep them as a souvenir, but it's even better if you come to books and spend them. Um, all the notes, by the way, have always had, um, they've always had people who have some association with books on them. And in the second issue, we managed to get permission, as you'll see, to uh, feature David Bowie. He was born in Brixton on the £10 note. Um, needless to say, it's our most popular note by quite some degree. Okay, um, so that's a bit about the positive side of the scheme. Let's have a look at the negatives. Um, there isn't really enough currency circulation to really make a difference. So if we're serious about our aim of really strengthening and shoring up support for local independent businesses and trying to help them compete against the encroach of a, a clone town high street, then we failed. Um, there's 56,000 people living in Brixton, um, so we probably need a few hundred thousand pounds of local currency regularly circulating to, to make any significant difference. Um, 
there's a very high transaction cost of the cash flow scheme. And by that, I don't mean a financial transaction cost. I mean the fact that if I want to get some of these notes, I'm going to spend them. I have to go to a cash point, get sterling, then I have to go to one of the six exchange points, and then I have to exchange my sterling, which I just went and got, for another piece of paper, and only then I'm going to spend it. Needless to say, we found that that gets put in the too difficult pile for a lot of people who uh, are quite supportive of the scheme, but they just can't be bothered to go to all that effort when they want to go and buy a copy. Um.